Hey everyone, Chris here. Just before we start the episode, I just want to say that the audio quality is slightly different to usual uh, because we had to sit slightly differently because of the microphone because we've both had COVID and so it was just easier to move everything around. So hopefully everything should be back to normal by next week. Until then, enjoy the show. My name's Chris! And I'm Christy! This is the Washing Up Podcast! We are back! It's been a while! It's been a little bit of a while. The last thing I think we, we were was the Virgies. Oh my gosh, that has been a long while and, you know, a, a break is good, but I'm just so excited to be back. Well, no, we did the Virgies, we did the Australian series after the Virgies, did but we? the last minute for Canadian was the Virgies. Oh, thank you for reminding me. I have no brain at the moment. It's being so we are, currently we, plagued. We are currently a plagued household. Yes. Um, um, so, um, so the whole reason why this is delayed is that Literally, as we went to re- well, just before we went to record, I I, I succumbed to plague. It yeah. suddenly went all six hundred B- no six hundred ACE here. Yeah, you know it was medieval Europe. There were peasants. There were there were ducks and geese running through the street. The only difference is that there in, was an Inquisition. Yeah, the only difference is in like the twelve hundreds and stuff like that when you know plague was going Some around. Some guy trying to rob us to give to the poor, and we're like, we're in the ninety nine percent, dude. Yeah, like, they didn't. They didn't have like rat tests. He's like, but you've got clean water and and all your teeth. You're obviously rich. <laughs> so yes, Christie came to 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 COVID just yeah, as we were, yeah, as we literally we were about to record, and uh-huh. like she sort of crumpled and then i tested the next day but as you can hear i sound a lot healthier so yeah you know i'm 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 glad for modern medicine and we've you know we've done all right um i've fared a little bit worse than you but let's not bore people with you know who's sicker than who who's sicker than who um let's who, get who had the plague doctor first let's and... get down to brass tacks shall we because we're back for another series of the great canadian bake-off it's bake-off not baking show i don't care what you say mm. so it is season six inside of the pavilion, pavilion. yes you can say P- pavilion as many times as you like you can, can Canada. you can you can you consistently can. try to tell us it's a tent yep it's a pavilion yep Right again. I put up a meme about this earlier this year. Mm-hmm. It's a pavilion in Canada. It's yep. a shed in Australia. It's a tent in Britain, and we don't care no. about New Zealand. But you know, it's a pavilion. It's a cabana. It's a cabana. Yes, cabana in. New so Zealand. they're they're a cabana, but we don't care about them. So mm-hmm. obviously we're back. We are. Obviously we've got a brand new batch of bakers. We do, but there's a face that we recognise. There really and we, is. We've, and because we're going to go through the bakers, we're of course. We're going to go through the bakers. Um, but let's start with, with someone we know. Who was the first first baker to speak and everything? Rosie. Rosie. Oh, she's she's a long-time listener. Um, first-time baker. Yeah, long-time listener, first-time <laughs> contestant <laughs> on a baking show. Um, so, oh, look, when the, when they did the announcement of, of everybody who was on the show and they announced, like, and Rosie was announced, um, we kind of fanned out a lot so it's always nice to have a, a, a baker on the inside it's nice to have people in there that are representing i claim they're representing us even if they don't i always no, no. do it's, um you know it feels like we've had some small part in it yeah. whether it's reminding them to you know read the recipe or Re- reminding um, them of the import- booze in the bakes You're always reminding them about booze in the bakes reminding them of the importance of calling it as much as they don't want to admit yeah not calling it a tent um, <laughs> you know i haven't heard her say the word tent yet so no, I'm, I'm assuming they just kept mm. cutting it out every time yeah, she said like, pavilion. I, I i'm i'm happy to be here in the pavilion oh <laughs> god damn it rosie those australians have gotten to you no they're not getting to you so let's go through who these bakers are yeah. so andre so mm-hmm. andre is an esl teacher and a personal mm-hmm. trainer which is a quite an interesting combination there in ottawa yes um, i'd like to think that he gets his students right and while he's teaching them you know um, English, you know, from yeah. their, whatever their second language is, um, you know, he's getting them to do a few burpees and they're like, no. <laughs> and he's like, oh, they're saying, you know, like, um, I, nine, nine. He's like, come on, German student. You need to say no. <laughs> I the idea that your ultimate your default ESL was the German student going nine, nine. Because, <laughs> first of all, they're just a big fan of the show. <laughs> nine, nine. But also, but also the idea that whenever I think of them going nine, nine, it just reminds me of either... Mm. Ramstein, <laughs> um, or World War Two sort of stereotypical nine nine. Guten Abend to these Britishers fight like madmen. Of course, so, but I like the idea now that that's who he's working with. Yeah, yeah, just the German exchange students, <laughs> all out of like those Commando comics from the, exactly. Um, Chi, 
who is um, a COO of a cellular technology company. Ooh. Ooh. From Toronto. Yeah. Um, so a, a great diversity of Ontario here we've got. I was going to say it's a bit Ontario heavy. This From system. one part of Ontario to the other. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so from the Habs to the Le- from the, the Habs from the Sens to the Leafs. Mm-hmm. Um, the Habs will come up in a bit though. Um, so then John who's from, who's a university administrator. Now, they say on his bio from, from Victoria, British Columbia. Mm. Nonsense. No, he's a newfie. He's a newfie. Yeah, we're going to have to, like, like he's, he is the only representative for British Columbia um, this season. But I feel like he's... Oh, no, there is one. There is, there is um, more, one more? Yeah, Lawrence from British Columbia. Oh, okay, so we can just call him the newfie guy. He's the newfie, yeah. Okay, you, you're newfie. Like, you're West Coast newfie. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> But then to go back from the diversity of where they're from, obviously, then we've then we've got Joma, um, who's a structural engineer, and Christy, who's a grant and proposal writer, both no, from not. Toronto. I'm a podcaster. Yeah, this is going to get and awkward. And a burlesque dancer. This is going to get awkward. Um, so <laughs> I like it. Her and I get I just a bit point confused. Out? She shows up to work in rhinestones, <laughs> and I show up, you know, can I to write a grant during my burlesque class. Can I just point out <laughs> yeah. that? Christy's first introduction to us, her bit at home with with, mm. you know, with her partner, was fantastic because they're going, oh, this will be interesting with Christy. Ha, we'll do a bit of, oh, look, they're the same person, blah, 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 blah. She immediately breaks out the tarot. I, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm a terrible tarot reader. Like, for, for a pagan a witch, reader. I'm really not that good at tarot. I'm, runes are more my thing. So I do a pre- So we are different people. We're different Christies. She she obviously inherited Has, has the, more of a skill. Yes. Um then we've got Lauren, who's a finance student from Tawasson and in British Columbia. Oh, and, okay, yep. And yep. also, as we'll get to in a minute, managed to make, I think, not only Anne, but everybody else watching feel incredibly old. Um, Look, just because she was born, though she's the same age that I was when she was born. This is, she's half my age. There you go. Yeah. Um, then Lydian. Um, mm who's a biobank manager from Montreal. So if again, for, for those hockey people out there, the, the Habs represented, or the Nordique, if you happen to be a Quebec, a Quebec Nordique fan. What does QC mean? So it's Quebec. Montreal. Oh, Quebec. Yeah. Oh, because there's a C at the end of it. Oh, that mm-hmm. makes sense. Sorry, I'm trying to learn all the, um, the abbreviations. The abbreviations here. All right, yeah. next up is Nigel, um, mm-hmm. who is a beanie-wearing graduate student from Winnipeg, Manitoba. I was going to say the Manny Beanie. The Manny Beanie. <laughs> the Manny Beanie. Manitoba. He's a man and he's wearing a beanie. <laughs> Look, to be fair, if you're the from Winnipeg, if, if, to be fair, if you're from Winnipeg, you've got a bunch of beanies. Um, <laughs> it's cold It's there. really cold in Winnipeg. Okay. Um, so, and again, for the for the NHL fans out there, Jets. Um, yep. So then Rosie, obviously, we mentioned from Ottawa. Um, again, so we go back to the, that really diverse range of Ontario. Mm. Um and Although then, she could be our, like, she could, we could say she's Australian. She's we'll claim whole, she's Australian. Whole lot of Rosie. Whole lot of Rosie. She, yeah. She's Australian. And then Zoya, who's a pediatric endocrinologist from Edmonton. And that's Alberta. That's Alberta. Well done. Look yeah. at you learning. And that's the Oilers for those people who judge everything off NHL. Oh, and that's Rosie. Kevin Smith's jersey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yes. So, <laughs> look, that gives you a bit of a rundown on who these bakers are. And the reason I did the NHL thing is, remember, we have an audience that's far more diverse than just Canada or Australia. We've got a very diverse audience, and mm. any way you can reference this, it's handy to work it out. Yeah. So obviously, we're going to get into we're going to get into the pavilion now. Mm-hmm. And when we get into the pavilion, we're going to start with the most important part. Usually, of this. by the stairs and the door. True. Is how you'd get into. That, that is normally pavilion. how you get in there. Across the deck. But what we're going to do is the patio furniture. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to start mm-hmm. not going past the patio furniture, but just acknowledging Alan and Anne. Yeah. And their wardrobe. Stunning. You know, whether you're sunning on the lawn, (coughs) on some patio furniture, doing an intro. Alan looked a lot like a far more up-to-date and hip and cool Gilligan. (laughs) Um, In the best possible way, Alan. It, it's it, if what happens if Gilligan like it's if trendy. the SS Minnow washed up in Italy like if, if, it just, <laughs> if it just washed up in Rome during Fashion Week the drip <laughs> um, and it, and of course now Anne channeling seventies just oh gorgeousness absolutely stunning. but the thing I want to mention here right <coughs> so I think something that brings to my attention one of the the skills that these two have very simple setup for the intro yes you know there's no I, this is going to sound so snarky, but may as well be. Um, and I love the other comedians who might do this on other um, versions of this show, um, and not Australians, by the way, um, is 
there's no like over the top kind of like need for um outfits there's no you know it's just a simple setup and it's hilarious and it's effective and i think it just shows their comedic skill like the comedic timing of them looking around yeah. like where are the bakers and alan's like oh there they are and hands perfect comedic timing. oh yes what I love, just, and, and look, it came across in this episode, it came across, <laughs> we, we talked about it a lot, and again, apologies for the fact we're going to both cough through this. Yeah. Um, look, we're, we were really disappointed we couldn't get this out on time, so yep. we're, we're doing our best to keep up with you. But mm -hmm. what I really love about this episode yep. is, again, it goes back to what we've, we talked about it last season. Alan and Anne grew into these roles so beautifully and so quickly. Yeah. And they've just got their, the pattern and the timing is so perfectly down. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's something that we're going to talk about when we start getting towards what's going to happen with Australian coming coming up with mm -hmm. brand new hosts. That's something that's going to be a very interesting new dynamic they're going to see there. Yeah. But these two have really nailed it at the moment. And mm -hmm. now, especially with the changeover and not seeing what's happening with Australian yet until that goes to where, which will be next year at some point. Yeah. I'm going to say straight up, these two are the current best hosts of a version of Bake Off. As it stands. Look, I agree wholeheartedly. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm going to have a watch of a few of the episode, new episodes of British just to um, see if they've gotten back into Can't any... wait for Mexican week. <laughs> that's, why, <laughs> that's why I'm kind of nervous because I'm like, every time I go back, I go they back to They do something boat, stupid. And then something ridiculous like tacos, tacos. <laughs> on a showstopper. <laughs> And it's, it's like, this is not MasterChef. So, look, we might, there might be a special episode at some point just dedicated mm. to Mexican Week. Because for those who were listening when we were doing British, mm. the thing that stopped us doing British was Japanese Week. We literally didn't go past that point. Because, and it's a good reference point because the, the showstopper in this... Yep. Is the showstopper mm -hmm. from Japanese Week, but it works here because Bloody it hell. wasn't a racial theme. No, it's just it's just a style of cute baking. Whereas in Japanese Week, they did it because oh, this is just Japanese when they had so many more options. But it, it's if we look at um, look at okay, so this is Cake Week, right? Yep. And. Oh, probably jumping ahead, but fuck it. We can do it. We, we do that, you know, and I, time People means nothing long enough. to me. People have listened long enough, they know. Yeah, I'm living in a time warp. I think the three challenges picked for this cake week are the best three challenges I've seen for a cake week, full stop. I really like them. We'll talk about it again, obviously, but I really like the technical in particular. I thought the technical was really cool. Yeah. I mean, not as good as last year's first technical because nothing will from sure, last a, lump, a lamington. That was lamingtons. Yeah. But, a yeah. lumpington. A lumpington. Um, <laughs> also, by the way, can I just say that um, Kyla's pink was very Kyla and I loved it. Mm -hmm. But the, the, the hidden gem for me mm -hmm. was Bruno's blue, white and, and yellow ensemble, which mm -hmm. was, and I'm saying ensemble deliberately for those who are going to make fun of me. Of course I'm saying it deliberately. His ensemble was stunning. I really liked it because it was very... Again, there was a bit of a Gilligan's Island theme going on. You felt um, he was um, Captain... No, the skipper. The, the skipper. <laughs> but a really, again, a really fashion-savvy fashion skipper. skipper. <laughs> like, he had the blue, and then he had the blue and white sort of with the, 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 the yellow, I think they were lemons, mm. on popping up. No tie, so it was very cash, Bruno. Um, the yellow sort of slacks, which were half-rolled, they was it was stunning. So they are, they're, they're Fashion Week Gilligan's Island. It's Fashion Week Gilligan's Island is what we got. And I am here for it and I want more of it. What I was disappointed with was at no point in the episode did Bruno take Alan's hat off his head and hit him over the head with it. And I can only hope that comes up in future weeks. So let's get into the actual episode, shall we? Because, you know, baking took place. Yes. So first of all, mm. the challenge was Freon's. Yep. Um... Now, you had to make a dozen Freons. It was like the late 90s in, in Sydney all over again. Yep. Yeah. Uh, look, we, we often talk about what happened in Miscellaneous City in terms of baking trends. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've t spoken many a time of the arrival of focaccia yeah. in the late 1990s and how trendy that became. And it was, I think it was around the same time or, or close on the heels to Freons. Because, I again, my, my introduction to Freons was the coffee cart at UNSW. Do you want a muffin or not? <laughs> If you don't want a muffin, how about a freon? Exactly. It's a bit like a muffin, but it's not. Yeah. Because it's made with nut flour. Um, <laughs> now, I, I'm i not going to lie. I, I did not get sick at all of them just consistently saying the phrase nut flour. 
Um, my only disappointment was, so you get nut milk, right? <laughs> what about what about milk nuts? Like, why can't you just have milk that's been turned into nuts and I'm sure if into you flour? Work- I mean, I technically think that's milk powder. But I'm sure you know. if you work hard enough on it, you can turn milk into nuts. Um, there you go. Some intrepid baker out there, give it a go. Or some crazy genetic Either scientist. Way, look, we've got a really talented fucking group around of, with cows. We've got a really talented goats. group of bakers this year. Yeah. Like you don't think one of them can't turn milk into nuts? I'm pretty <laughs> sure they've got the, they've got the tools to do it. Um, so two hours to make a dozen freons, any flavor that you want it. Now. Mm-hmm. There are a couple of people who took this to heart, and there's one in particular we'll get to that won my heart at this point. Mm -hmm. So let's go with Andre. So Andre decided to start with pistachio and pineapple. Yeah. um, Added a bit of rose in there. Now, again, with Bake Off, Mm -hmm. always a a bold move Mm, is to put rose. He's coming out strong, you know, like... Uh, like Rose. Pineapple. Rose. <laughs> well, yeah. the thing is that Rose is often the thing that trips people over in every form of Bake Off because mm-hmm. it it's powerful. It, it packs a punch. And we said that with the judging when they said they couldn't taste pineapple, but they could taste Rose. There, there's a fine line between it being a Rose-flavoured cake and being a, a cake flavoured so- Rose. <laughs> yeah. cake-flavoured Rose. Yeah. Exactly. Um, now... Then we cut to John. Now, again, if there were any questions over whether Victoria gets to claim John mm-hmm. or Newfoundland gets to claim claim John, the Screech... What about Newfound Vic? The Screech rum gave it away. Newtoria. Newtoria. Oh, God. So... It's th- a new song by <laughs> Lorraine. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a deep cut. Look, um, you know, Jay's cacking himself. Yeah, right now, right now, the three bakers that we know who listen, who watch your revision are dying, dying of laughter right now. <laughs> yep. um, you know, Jay is losing it at that, <laughs> at that reference. Um, hey, Jay, by the way. Um, so, the Screech Rum. Yes. So, and again, I've, I've mentioned Screech before, and I've mentioned being Screeched in. And he was a really shit, like, no, not say by, by the, the bell. bell. <laughs> no, look, the, okay. we'll, we'll that's, explain when, it again. Hope, no, we'll, well, I'm going to wait, because when we eventually get John on the show. He can explain. We can talk about screech it being screeched in, which is you know what happens when you get like it's really snowing outside. You can't go anywhere. There's a whole process and a whole thing to it. Ah. But um, now his was based on a figgy duff, Mm -hmm. currants and custard buttercream, which is it's a type of steamed pudding. Yeah. Um, a figgy duff. Now, do you want to be up the figgy duff? Do you want to be up the figgy duff? <laughs> um, is that what they 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 declare when they declare <coughs> that if you've been screeched in for long enough, you get figgy <laughs> duff. <laughs> <laughs> screeched in for long enough. What are you? Figgy duff. Um, <laughs> there we go, ladies and gentlemen. We've given you a new <laughs> sentence. You're welcome. Yeah. Um, now. John brings the screech rum, and you're like, "Yes, this is Bake Off." And then she goes, "I can one up you there. Oof. I'm going to get some sour cherries, yep, and I'm going to soak them in Kirsch." Yep. We find out later that she was um born and uh, lived in Germany growing up. Was she born in Germany or just lived in Germany growing up? Yeah. So, so you know, I assume she was just you know have your cereal. Some Kirsch, Kirsch on. on it. Exactly, that's what happens in Germany. And these are the students that on, and these are the students that Andre is currently teaching. <laughs> teaching <yes. laughs> Except in in September, which is Oktoberfest. Yep. Um, when they you have to pour beer. Yeah, exactly. You know, or at least schnapps. Can I just say it's really annoying. Oktoberfest is in September. <laughs> I get it. I get why. But why? it's just annoying. I don't get it. I get annoying. It's supposed to be celebrating the upcoming seasons. Oh, okay. Um, now, now Christy's one of these ones who started baking during lockdown. There, Christy, not you. No, I did not start baking. No, you really down. didn't. Um, I kind of looked at it and um, denied and went, mm, the and, worked out we could, and worked out we could order baking at that point. Exactly. Um, so, um, now also, she's the one who, at this point, they cut to, to her apartment with the tarot. Um, and I loved the positive reinforcement. Good tarot in there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just so, like, just so positive. You know, like, if I did a tarot reading for you, you'd be like, sure. You know, no, you'd go, oh, good Tarot reading there, babe. Thanks, like, like yours would be super sarcastic. Like, yeah, no, uh, hers was so genuine and warm. I know. Very lovely. Um, now, pistachio and cardamom mm-hmm. um, with mang- mango pie sort of themed mm-hmm. and, and, and topped with um, burfi, which is Indian. An Indian sweet. Yes. Mm. Um, then we get to Rosie. A whole lot of Rosie. A whole lot of Rosie. And Rosie is doing um, 
Barnbrack Frions, which is raisin and whiskey butter. I think you'll find it's called Barnbrack. Yes. Because it's Irish, you see. Rosie's Irish and Australian and Canadian, apparently. She's everything. She's, a, she's all, all things, things to, to all people. people. <laughs> she's, a, she's a woman of the world, oh, Rosie. <laughs> and also the stencil marzipan. Now, again, look, again, Rosie with the whiskey butter. Mm-hmm. She's, she's, she's worked out over the years of listening to the podcast. And again, I highly advise you. I'm not saying we're really good at this. But if you'd like to go on a version of Bake Off, if you, you just, just follow listen. our life rules, yeah, just follow our life rules. What does Bruno love? Butter. butter. What do all of the judges like? Booze. booze. What do you put together? Butter, butter and, and booze. booze. What do you end up with? Whiskey butter. And if you like panic, throw bacon at it. Throw bacon at it, or do what a couple of people did in the judging and go, "That's exactly what I meant." Like yep. they're all good learning. job, Andre. What mm. I, yeah, there were there were a couple of people that did that. Lydia mm. tried at one point where she went, I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> um, so what I'm I'm really have loves denial. <laughs> <laughs> so I really highly recommend that if you would like to learn how to how to you know crush it on Bake Off in the future, just listen to the multiple hours of us rambling on about and telling you shit. Ex- <laughs> they're telling you exactly <laughs> what the hell to do when you go on there, and you too can learn about what felching is. Oh, don't even. Um, <laughs> They did cut to John at this point, who was begging for, and I quote him directly here, no wet centres. Look, he's, he's a gay boy, so, you know, it might not be something that he would necessarily... Uh, too early, John? I'm sorry, darling. It's too early in the friendship. You've got to too early in the friendship. Establish the friendship first. Establish the friendship first. Before I start making um, um, inferences towards um, genitalia. <laughs> yeah, go, go, yeah. Okay, back at, back at the no <laughs> wet centres. Back centers. at the ranch. Um, yep. Lauren made Anne feel incredibly old by pointing out when she was bur- born. Burn. Uh, burn. Um, <laughs> she was barren. <laughs> um, now, this mm-hmm. is the Sunny Tawasson um, cookie, uh, uh, Freons, which was mm-hmm. the smiling sort of Freons mm-hmm. with the lemon glazed cookies on the blueberry Freons, which she was an ode to the blueberry muffins, which I think she said was, was it her grandmother, I think, would make blueberry yeah, muffins. So. so she wanted it to sort of be a bit of an ode to blueberry muffins. Now, the texture mm-hmm. did end up going very muffiny. It um, did, yes. And, you know, again, in the free on community, that's a no-no. Mm. You know, oh, it's too close to muffins. Oh, all the free on connoisseurs out there will just start turning their nose up at you. And they're going, connoisseurs. Where are my nuts? And they're connoisseurs. Where's my nuts, bitch? Right, they're definitely connoisseurs oh. because, I mean, the word is, again, they're not, they're not muffins or cakes or mm. cupcakes. They're free So, of yeah. course, they sound fancy. So, you've got to be a connoisseur. Um, Joma. Mm. So, Joma went with cardamom. Tamarind, which was an interesting call and a pretty good call, it turned out, mm. and chocolate filled Freons. Mm. Now, this was a great idea. Until he forgot the chocolate. Yeah. I mean, look, it ended up working really well because he got a good balance distribution eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So forgetting the chocolate kind of helped him. Um, mm-hmm. But then he remembered it, obviously. Yeah. He otherwise, it up. he'd be like, oh, it's my cardamom and tamarind. Tamarind. With and- chocolate on the side. <laughs> Here, have a chocolate chip. <laughs> optional chips just what he does is he's got a little shot glass full of chocolate chips yeah. and it's a chocolate chip shot with a free on chaser <laughs> or like I don't know if they have it in or they probably <coughs> won't have yogo in Canada no. but it's like a chocolate pudding right and in Australia you can get it in it's like a little tub and it, the tub's in two halves and it's got the chocolate pudding yogo on one side and like chocolate chips on the other so you can dump the chocolate chips into it yes I'd like to think that that's what you could do in with the free ones with the free ones yeah that could be cool now they cut to Zoya, um, mm. and they, they ask, you know, because she's doing a marmalade glaze, and yes. Alan's like, do you happen to like Paddington? Oh, I love Paddington! And this was before we even knew the Queen was going to die, and the whole Paddington thing was going to be a thing. Big explosion, yes. Yeah, so, oh, um, just, oh. Now, look, Zoya, there were a couple of, obviously, again, she's a child um, endocrinologist. Um, Speaking of Paddington, right? Oh, okay, you know, you keep going with yeah, that. Yeah, we'll come back to Paddington. My ADHD brain is even worse at the It moment, is, because you've got, you've got COVID brain and ADHD, ADHD brain. brain. It's a great combination. Yeah, let's do this. Um, when they did Zoya's bit from home, yeah. they were talking about, you know, what a great support, you know, and learning baking from her mother was, mm-hmm. which was lovely, except the way that it came across on that Zoom was very <laughs> aggressive. <laughs> like, not intentional. I'm pretty sure it's not intentional. So but it just looks like, like, like Zoya holds up this thing measurement to the camera and mum's like, a bit more. Uh, <laughs> now, I like to imagine that it was a boot camp. Yes. Like, this was a bake-off boot camp and her mother's on Zoom going, more, more, more. more. Do not make... And like, 
I like that they also did this thing where they sent the measuring teacup that she'd mm-hmm. used and it was sent to her so she could use it inside the pavilion. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to... A part of me was like, oh, that's a beautiful, wonderful touch. But part of me feels like mum was really worried that she was going to get it wrong. So she mm-hmm. sent her the only measuring device she trusts. You know why? Because I think Zoya, her mum gave Zoya Grace to go and pursue her pursuits of, you know, being a pediatrician. But she's like, fine, you go forth, but you know, you owe me. I'm going to live vicariously through you as a baker. You know, I've always dreamed for you to be a baker. baker. Why are you running off to become a doctor? (laughs) How dare you? I've always wanted a baker. (laughs) And you're you're breaking my heart. This is is always the problem, by the way. You know, there's children running off to become pediatricians when all their parents want them to be is bakers. bakers, It's so, it's so problematic. You're right. You're very right. Um, Now I've worked out that, that, so far in there, Christy is a bit of my Patronus. Yes. Because, like, the amount of mess around her bench mm-hmm. and the spilling crap everywhere, very me. She really is our daughter, you know? Like, if we met when we were teenagers and had a child and I gave her my name and our both of our, like, cleaning habits and baking habits, well, mostly your baking habits, that's where we're at. And that's where we are, yeah. Mm. Um... Let's cut to the person that I feel at this point in time has already won the whole show. Um, Nigel. Now, it, it <laughs> could be... Beanie, isn't it? It could be the whimsical beanie. And again, yeah, purple's my favourite colour. It could be... It could the, be the whimsical beanie. The it, frisbee. Well, it could have been. I like the fact by why we got some hardcore frisbee work there. Yeah. Um, but the real answer is that lots he made... disc action. Lots of disc action. But what I really loved is the, the chicken and waffles. Now, <laughs> you know me. Yes. While we cover all of this baking stuff, mm-hmm. I love savoury. <laughs> you do. And chicken and waffles in a frion, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm, I'm totally for it, and I would like more of it. So I was really... And I like the crispy chicken skin. Mm-hmm. Um, chicken skin, by the way, crispy chicken skin, deeply underrated. Um, oh. Pork crackling is great. Chicken crackling, mm. which is, you know, when they just take that, that chicken skin and really crisp it up, very underrated, and I highly recommend it to people. Oh, it's brilliant. And, you know, like, <coughs> in this situation, you, they could have gone, he could have gone, oh, you know, that maple bacon flavour. But I love that we're getting, you know, new versions of bringing meat into bakes. Exactly. You know? um, I'm looking forward to more of it. Um, now, Rosie's freons weren't rising at this point. And what I really loved was it was almost like she was giving the instructions to the camera guys. Because mm-hmm. she turned around and she went, um, they're not rising. Look, give me five more minutes. Then I'll freak out. Yeah. Actually, look, I've got five more minutes to workshop this. If it doesn't work in five minutes, then I'll freak come out. Come back. I'll be, yeah, yeah. at that point, I'll be great television. Uh-huh. At the moment, I'm not quite. Um, now, they cut over to Lydian. Now, we've, we've got to have a bit of a conversation about Lydian's bakes. So, pistachio and brown butter. Yep, fantastic. But what we need to discuss is a far more disturbing moment. Mm-hmm. Um, everybody who's been listening to this show over the years will know that we've had an ongoing battle with Big Berry. Oh, my gosh. Like, the Saskatoon Berry conspiracy, I maintain they're not real. We no. both maintain they're not real. We've been burned before. We've been put in Canadian debtors' prison because of it. Look, right? you know, I know that the, the delightful Jody <coughs> did try and, you know, prove to us that they that they existed by sending us some Saskatoon Berry merch, like, you know, Depot of berries. But yeah. how do we know that that just not... Just repackaged. They're, they're blueberries covered in raspberry. We've talked about this. But <laughs> I've worked something out. They know we're onto them. Yeah. So what did we get this episode? Oh, these sounds totes legit. Sea berries. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. Just come on. Sea You're not berries. even trying anymore. We are so onto you, Big Berry. Could you imagine the bloody, um, the meeting they had to come up with these? Like, mm, what will we call these? <coughs> I don't know. Uh, um, mountain berries? No, no, that's no. They'll work that out. They'll work that out. They'll be onto us there. Field berries? No. I know. Christy's always talking about you know parts of Canada that are really close to the water. Sea, sea berries. berries. There we go. She'll never suspect the sea berry. We're no. onto you, big berry. We are onto you. I don't want to see sea berries again. They're not real. <laughs> we caught you out on the sack. Stop. With the fake stuff. There's so many real berries that are wonderful. Like Celebrate real. No, but at least if you're going to use berries like that, right, 
like go the Australian route and either like just come up with a random name for them or a, like like or the, the indigenous name like Kwandong. Yes. You know. Kwandong is a real thing. Kwandong is a totally real thing. You think, oh, that's made up, but yeah. it's actually not. Kwandongs are, Kwandongs are um, harvested by drop bears. So <laughs> they're very real. They're very real. You and know, we and don't make things up here, unlike apparently Canadian berry. Yeah, and if you want a really good Kwandong, you want one that's been um, eaten and then pooped out by... <laughs> and we are talking Kwandongs, by the way. Not condoms. <laughs> Kwandongs. That is a real word. Look it up. It starts with a Q. Mm. Um, in fact, if you're in Canada, <laughs> let us know when you've looked up what a Kwandong is. Mm-hmm. Right, have a look. Um, so we get back to the bacon. <coughs> <chicken. coughs> yeah, but I'm on to you, Big Berry. Um, now, Chi. Chi uttered mm. the most Bake Off phrase that has ever been used in any global series of Bake Off. Mm-hmm. I'm dipping these bourbon cherries in tempered chocolate then covering them in luster dust. <laughs> that, that is a line to make every baker just drool and... Like, just, it's, 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 I can't even, sorry. It could not be more perfect. It's, it, okay, you know how on Taskmaster they will name the episode after the line of the, of the, of the day? This needs to be the the name of the whole season. The whole season is it. (laughs) Um, Now, she was making a Black Forest theme, which is her favourite cake. Mm -hmm. So. Mine too. I like a good Black Forest action. And then obviously because I used to think it was the height of fucking sophistication growing up. I used to think the Black Forest was the height of sophistication. It's the, it's the chocolate. It's because the cream was piped on, you had the glass A cherries, and like not just chocolate sprinkles, like like chocolate flakes, like coated on. We don't the side. see it that much in Bake Off, really. No. The last time we really saw quality Black Forest was mm. Claudia in Australia. Yeah, just before she went on to win the series, it was mm. amazing Black Forest. Um, so. The last part to note about the the signature is, you know, because the signature is the signature of the first episode is introduce us to who the bakers are. Yeah, you don't see a lot of baking. You see a little bit of what they're doing, but you mm. see the bakers. Yeah. Um. But what we also got here was the height of Bake Off culture. So we, we got to see at the very end, um, Lydia was struggling to get the the chocolate unstuck. So yeah, Andre so. came over and helped her helped her out. Mm-hmm. Um, Rosie was having a bit of so problem. Nigel Imagine. came running over and helped her out. So the Beanie spirit to the rescue. The spirit's there. Yes. Which is always important. So, the judging. Uh, you know the other spirit that was there? The spirit of Jude's whimsy that made um, Rosie forget her sugar. Yes, Rosie did forget her sugar. Mm. So, now Bruno wanted more butter from Chi. So, Chi, there's, there's an early lesson for you. Well, um, but she had to give up something to fit the extra booze in. No, like, you don't have to give up butter. <laughs> look, look, we know that they love booze, mm-hmm. but on a scale of booze to butter you got to get the ratio correct. bruno needs his butter yeah true. like bruno i want bruno to release some merchandise mm-hmm. that's just a picture of bruno standing there with like bruno needs his butter written there yes well you know with the um advent of maggie beer's retirement from bake off australia he's the new butter baron he really is the new butter baron um <laughs> that might come up at a later date um kyla however did like the booze mm. so you know balances a little bit um john they said a clean presentation mm-hmm. crisp edge Nice rum flavour. And no... <coughs> no more middles for, for days. And they said that anywhere. he could use his mother's recipe. Didn't ruin Christmas. No. Um, Everyone can be... What was it? Squelched up and up the... Screeched. Up. Screeched up. Squelched up. Screeched up. I'm assuming that's what happens after the snow melts. Screeched up. Squelched up. up. Screeched up the feed up. Anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> then... Uh, Lydian... Um, mm-hmm. Well, that's first of all, Andre, for it was consistent and clean, lovely texture, no pineapple flavour, oh. but they got the rose. Um, oh. And then Lydian, and he goes, of course, that's what I meant. Bette Midler comes in. Yeah, Lydian <laughs> comes in and smartly claimed that she meant the messy look, where she's like, I can either confirm or deny that's what I was going for. Yeah, yeah. Um, Own that, Lydian. Love it. They said the pistachio flavour was a bit weak and she needed, they needed more. Yes. Um, more nuts. Rosie? They said they were underbaked but great flavour, and that's where she told everyone she forgot the sugar. <laughs> <coughs> um, Zoya, they just said just nail the flavours. Absolutely nail yep. the flavours. Um, Lauren. Her mother's going, yes, she, yes, my dream's finally coming the true. The teacup helped. Yes. Um, they cut to Lauren, and um, Kyla looks at her and goes, were they a bit warm when you iced them? <laughs> the ice is <laughs> dripping off the up. side. No, I meant them to be like that. <laughs> um, they did say that inside was muffin. Texture. Um, 
Christy, they said they were vibrant. Um, they liked that inverted design, which was really cool. Which yeah, was I the did bowl like that. Shape. That was really that was really cool. Yeah, and um, I think like because it was like mango pie kind of look. Yeah, that's what I liked about it. Like it looked um, mangoey to me. They said she nailed that flavor, but they wanted a bit more cardamom. Mm-hmm. Um, Joma, the tamarind was a genius call in terms of the flavors. Yeah. Um, Clean and consistent and good chocolate distribution. He's like, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. That's why I left him out for so long. GCD, GCD. <coughs> um, I'm just doing it. Like, did you know kids these days, like in Australia, they now go NWS, which is no worries. Did you know that? No. Okay, so no worries is an Australianism. Yeah. And now there's like an even a shorthand, NWS. Um. Which means no worries, just so you know when you're texting these days. It's Sakuna Matata. <laughs> anyway, um, then Nigel, they said the concept was great, the honey glaze was great, and the chicken skin was nice. And like, as, um, as Anne put it, she goes, look, I didn't come in expecting to eat chicken skin today, and I've eaten all of it. Um, <laughs> that's a good day, Anne. If, yeah, if, yeah. Yeah, that's a good day. And that's first day on set, man. Like that first, Exactly. First, first day on set. Day? First day on set. First, first challenge. Bake. What are you doing? Chicken skin. Mm. Now... They asked Nigel afterwards. Um, no, like it's 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 all downhill. It's it's all uphill. It's it's straight ahead. It's something. It's around. <laughs> um, now this gives me a chance before we get to the technical to cut to bird watch, bird watch, bird watch. Yes, which I'm really okay. So I've, <coughs> I I can identify the red cardinals. Yes. Now there was a slightly orangey and black one. It looks like a little finch, and I did put that one up on Twitter, and someone said that's probably a goldfinch, and there's a brighter yellow one too, which I'm assuming could be the same kind of genus yeah so if anyone can help christy with what the genus of these birds are yeah no I, like you could probably hear out the back i don't know if you can hear we've got an Bacon. australian miner chirping outside occasionally we get lorikeet oh occasionally we get bloody lorikeets every day they're just your bloody flamboyant noisy little parrot types um oh in the background thank you that was a magpie i don't know if that's coming through um it's a good time of day to be giving a bird over here anyway. in australia um, no, still just an Australian miner and a magpie. I thought we we're going to get something like a sulphur crested cockatoo, um, maybe a lyrebird. No, there's a house. There's a house a couple of blocks over that is absolutely infested with cockatoos. Oh my god, they will eat the shit out of your things. We so, so again, them. tangent because that's what we do. Um, yeah. Our our balcony in our front of our house has mm. a metal piece stuck to the wall. Yeah, because the cockatoos ate the the, the board. Yep, and we got that repaired, and then they came back and started to try and eat it again. So we've just put up a metal plate there. Um, so they started eating the railing. Yeah, um, um, but now we have a new cat who um, is not afraid, who can actually face up to the cockatoos. As opposed to our <laughs> others who run away. Yeah, like, <laughs> this, yes, go turn to all the mighty. So, <laughs> anyway, back at the ranch. The technical. Yes. It's time for mm. Bolo de Rolo. Now, one... How fucking cool is the name? It's so fucking good. And, it, and it, I feel like it, it does what it says on the tin. Bolo de Rolo. Yeah. Like if, if you told me I'm getting a Bolo de Rolo, that's, that's what you picture. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe some chocolate. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Maybe some chocolate on the back of the Rolo, the lolly. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but apart from that, no, Bolo de Rolo, it's exactly what you think it is. Um, <clears throat> now, it's a Brazilian dessert. Mm-hmm. We also got a glimpse of Alan at Sugar Bay. Um, <laughs> just the little doing his little sprinkle of, of sugar. Um, so as you you described it when we were watching the episode, you described it as the love child of a Swiss roll and a chic torta. Yeah, it really is because it's got the layers of the chic torta. <coughs> they're, they're really thin. They're really thin. Um, but instead of like, I guess like someone in Brazil was kind of like watching a German person going, "You bloody idiots! Like, why would you do that?" I'm not suggesting there was ever a period of time where Brazilians would have had an up close ability to watch Germans. <laughs> German <cook>. um, <laughs> I don't. I know nothing. I know nothing. Um, so you know, German references just, this episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's German heavy considering it's Canadian bake off. There's not even been as any French. There's not even been a German challenge. There's been more Irish and German like, <laughs> than anything else. Anyway, just a Brazilian there watching this German person try and make a chic totter and just going, dude, why don't you just do it in different plates and then roll it up? Like, then everything will be like, I don't know, not dry. Um, and you can actually count the layers. And they're like, oh, that sounds good. What a efficient <laughs> thing to do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the queen of the accents returns. You're welcome. Well done. <laughs> So that is that is. The, no, I'm off to do my burpees with Andre. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is legitimately the best Mexican accent I've heard today. So, 
Um, <laughs> it's a Brazilian accent. Thank you very much. So they asked Rosie about this, and they said, "You know what you're doing here." And Rosie goes, "Of course." And they went, "What? Will you take little layers of cake, mm-hmm. roll them up, and then do something with them?" Perfect, Rosie. That is. Yeah. I think you've been listening to us a little bit too long. I, I think she she knows she was literally just reading the recipe. <laughs> <laughs> Do something. Um, Although I did notice it was at least a two-pager. <coughs> I, we're not in evil Canadian territory not that evil yet. yet. Yeah. Um, apparently, there is a technical in British in this series, which mm-hmm. is just make, and they name the dessert. Fantastic. And that's literally the entire technical. Great. There's no instructions. There's nothing. It's just make this. Mm. Um, so... Can I just say, the process of breaking down the guava paste into jam looks like the most painfully annoying process ever. Look, I I looked at that and I'm like, how? What are some other methods you could use to break down that guava? It looks like resin. Like, I'm thinking <laughs> like a tortilla press, like just give it a good old squish. But British like, could have learned the tortilla presses. Yes, they could have. <laughs> look, still makes for a better fucking... <laughs> Showstopper, just squishing down some squish guava. Tortilla pressed <laughs> guava paste. Still a taco. <laughs> yeah, still a <laughs> showstopper. Better showstopper. Um, but you know what? They might call that Jap- Japanese week. Yeah. Because <laughs> or friggin', I don't know, guava. They might Peruvian be, week. Peruvian week indeed. Um, so, what was I talking about? Other ways to, to squish it down. A tank? Like, just... <laughs> <laughs> line them up under the rails of a tank. I mean, I um, just, I just thought it looked like a resin at first. It was like, mm-hmm. you know, like you know, they needed a slap chop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sure they had them in Canada. I, you... A slap chop would have actually done quite well to start with. They had like potato mashes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, that just looks annoying. It looked actually what it looked like was. Do you remember those old um, mm. erasers, the mm-hmm. big squares? Mm-hmm. That are like that, that sort of, they looked that consistency, they looked that colour. And they were a gum. Yeah, they were oh, gum. I hated them, and they just smudged everything. It looked like they took those. Oh, God. And like you had to break those down in a pan. Um, I nibbled on the edge of one of those once as a dare. Of course you did. Um, it's, it's what you do when you're at primary school. I once saw somebody cut the tip off their finger while they were trying to cut one of those. Anyway. Ugh. Um, yeah. See, they, they just, I'm They didn't notice either. either. They didn't notice either. Um, Was it your dad? No. Um... Was so, it your mum? No. Was so, it your brother? No, it was no one in my family. Um, <laughs> Why am I just naming people in your family? I don't know. As if I'm so sure that they would have... I would have heard that story by you now. You would have known by now. Um, it would have been story number 397 from now the they cut, Buchanan story. They cut back to... When they cut back to the table and showed mm. them with it, it's a huge roll. Fuck yes. Like that... Like... <laughs> was a great photo on Instagram of Nigel cr- cr- cradling it like a small child. Good. It really does lend itself to, you know, when you're watching a sitcom and they cut from the child actor that they've hired as a baby to the rolled up towel yes. that is acting as the baby. Because <laughs> the child couldn't be on set for that long. I think they've got their new substitute. It's just a <laughs> Bolo de Rollo. Bolo de Rollo. Okay, now can we have the Bolo de Rollo? <laughs> and I like that it's a very short, small number of eggs. It's only the nine. Um, oh, yeah. Only the nine eggs. Look, considering... How big and and like everything it is, nine eggs is pretty good. Um, now it was a very thick batter that you needed to roll the eggs. Like, cause they had to whip up the whites or something. That's like that. it's from Brazil. It probably is like nine chicken eggs or one like fucking bird of prey egg that they have <laughs> over there. Like just one. What do they have? Condors. Italy. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just I'm just being such a white person talking about you South really America. <laughs> and everyone's like, if you keep being that, for wh- fuck's if sake. you keep being that white, you could write the challenges for British. People. <laughs> if you keep being that white, you could write all of the themed weeks for British Bake Off. It's just all of the different Empire weeks. <laughs> no. Welcome to we colonized this week. Um, Here's another little quaint thing that we stole from someone else. <laughs> so, okay, back at the ranch. Back at the ranch. Um, Lauren at this point was like, "I should have gone to the gym because I've got to fold all this in." She goes, looks like, and goes, "Not a problem for Andre." <laughs> I should say that. I'm like, cut to Andre, and there we go. Perfect segue. <laughs> Andre's just there, you know, stirring it with one hand, you know, lifting 260 kilos in the other. Now, again, 
Uh, Rosie's experience in watching and obviously listening to us comes through. Yeah. Um, six, ba- sh- six sheets of baking with no time. And then Rosie goes, well, why would they? It's a technical. Yes, Rosie. Experience. Mm. Experience. Knowledge. Yep. Um, now, you had to sprinkle with sugar and jam while hot, and then it was a tight roll. That's This is what I loved. It's like, um, it, you know, it's another timing challenge. Oh, this is why I just think this is one of the best, like, lines. And we've had this in a few seasons recently where we've just seen perfectly crafted shows, like uh, episodes, and this is one of them. Yep. And I think this whole kind of like, it's a, it's a simple, like, little sponge, right? But there's so much... Timing. Timing and organization and this is where you know we my talked, executive function would just fail you know we talked last year about the the lamington mm-hmm. and as we said with the lamington the lamington itself is not hard yeah. but what it relies on is depth of baking knowledge because you have to know what the hell a lamington is yeah and then you had to work out how to put those techniques together without knowing the bake whereas with this one here you mm-hmm. didn't know the bake but again this one is not a a technique thing like with the lamington mm-hmm. it's a timing thing but i did feel a little you know we've all seen that um <coughs> That Bake Off meme that goes around. It's like, no, you can't do such and such because you've been watching so much Bake yeah. Off, right? And I'm like, oh, you've got to get that tight roll to start it off with. Otherwise, the rest of it's just going to be shit. I'm like, mm, no, that's that's a bad start for your roll. And we saw a bunch of yeah. cracking going on too. Yeah. Um, like, oh. now, um, Lauren, with the line of this challenge, which was one in, one out, spread, roll, repeat, which feels like many people's dating histories. Um, <laughs> Just feels like a flashback to a darker time. Um, one I... in, one out, spread, roll, repeat. Look, it, my early 20s, really. Um... <laughs> um, and she then sums that up by going, it can only get better from here, right? It did, because I met you. It there did. we go. There we go. Now, can I just say, Alan mm. asked Lauren about her sprinkle technique. Mm. It was magical. I love it. It was like just this whimsical arm out. Oh, look, if that's... It wasn't like... whimsical, it was magical. Look, if that's what they're teaching finance students these days, imagine what the art students are getting oh, up to. Oh, wow. Like, Hardcore numbers. Like, um. like, you see Lauren, right? She looks what... If you, if she said, I'm doing fine art, she'd be like, yep, you totally are. Yep. She's a finance student. I'm like, I've got faith in the future economy. The, f- the future of the economy. Yes. Yeah. Um, then we get Lydian with one of my favourite interactions from this whole episode, mm. where Lydian's like, I've done roll cakes before. Or do you think it's because her, like... Her, like, um, bohemian parents, much like Zoya's, <laughs> like, look, we've let you do the finance. Now you you're going to go to the baker. All these Fine. people defying their parents <laughs> yes. and going into serious <laughs> careers. Um, but, yeah, Lydia with one of my favourite interactions of the whole series yeah. um, so far. I've done roll cakes. They were not successful. And Alan's <laughs> like, but this one. And she goes, no. <laughs> look, owning it owning it Lydianne and I've, I'm here for it and then Zoya with as you've all seen on social media Oof. the most memed part of the whole episode yeah it's so thick in the middle it's thick with three C's oof yes you know Zoya I'm going to use that for one of my burlesque tag taglines thick with three C's <laughs> thick with three C's because that is that is gorgeous it's I love that explain, brilliant that description um, so the judging yeah. John they said had a chunk missing Mm-hmm. Cracking, they expect cracking in the first roll, mm-hmm. but not later. So the first one can crack, but after that, they expect the rolls to be, be tightened up. Yep. Now, as Kyla put it, mm. as the revolutions go on, it should get smoother. Now, I feel this is less about baking and more a call to arms for people as they overthrow <laughs> governments. <laughs> because, look, when the, as the revolutions go on, the first one's going to be tricky, but after yeah. that, it gets a lot smoother. You know, the first one you do in the spring... <laughs> after that the revolution gets better and better and better as you go it's so much smoother i'm assuming she's giving advice on that That's oh yeah she's she's totally like working out those it's like the portuguese for... it's like the portuguese entry in 1974 1974 in eurovision which started off the revolution um it's exactly <laughs> oh my what it was it was a code what happened on monday it was a code <laughs> what did she... Canada, okay anyway um so, the middle was undercooked, but the guava was nice. Mm-hmm. Um, Nigel's was not too bad, just a bit of a break in the middle. The jam was very thin. Um, Rosie, they said, was they got the shape right. She got the shape right and very nice jam. Mm-hmm. Um, Zoya, nice presentation, thick layers. Outer was good, but the middle wasn't baked properly, but very good jam. Um, Joe Mars was round and then had a divot. Um, don't know how. Baked well, but good jam. Um... Cheese were very was very uniform with good flavours. 
Um, Christie's had very thin jam, which she flagged in her bake. She's like, I feel like I haven't got enough jam there. Yeah. Um, the flavours blend well, and they said the tang from the guava jam was really nice, though, but they wanted more of it. Um, Lydian. Now, they said that it was trying to collapse, and it felt <laughs> panicked. Now, it looked to me like... You've seen those British hill forts? Yes. Because it was much more like a, a sort of dome. Tony Robson, Robinson was going to come <coughs> track you up there and start telling you about like what the time team are going to be doing. Yeah, a, 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 a guy from the a, a guy from the, the West Country is going to... All right, then there we go. In his little jean shorts. Yeah. <laughs> and we're going to put the, the probe over here. Um, <laughs> so... Andre, they said there was a layer or two missing and it was too thick and different flavour. You know, the idea of Andre doing something was too thick. I, um, <laughs> Lauren, I said it was large, it wasn't really rolled tight, but the guava was really good. So you had, from from last to first, you had Andre, Lydian, Zoya, John, Nigel, Lauren, Jomar, Christy, Rosie, yay, and then Chi. So Woo! Chi wins the first. She wins the first technical of the series with Rosie coming second. So now we come on to the showstopper. Now, Indeed. Because it is super cute, super cute. It's a kawaii. Now we mentioned before, kawaii cake was obviously on British Bake Off. It was, yeah. Um, in the ill-fated um, Japanese week. Mm-hmm. This works better because, again, it's not, you know, looking at, at it being Japanese culture and Japanese traditional baking and then going kawaii, which is, you know, just cute. That's all it means. Um, mm. So it's it's very much a trend thing, and it's sort of designed... Look, it's obviously designed to be a really good-looking thing for the first episode. Yeah. But you got some really good quality baking out of it too. So. Look, it's cake week, you know? Like, yeah. it, there's not a lot you can do apart from with the showstopper apart from go let's make something that looks good exactly. it's a sh- fucking showstopper it's not like we got the technical if the technical was shit house yeah then yeah then we probably have something to say yeah but, but it works even perfectly. then this works perfectly and i think it works perfectly as as the um the choice for the challenge exactly so kawaii yeah. cake um so it's so cute who wouldn't want a kawaii cake you know I mean, rosie leads us off in this one of course with with Da 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 salt. You know um, how it could have only gotten cuter? How? If they had to make it in the little tiny you know when you see people oh, doing those... tiny bakes? I, I, and I, then I, they feed it to a, like a little hamster. I was gonna say, are you about to go hamster and, with a burrito? Yeah, and then and then you have like a little hamster Bruno and a little hamster Kyla come out and, and a little hamster Alan who's got a real hat on. <laughs> that could be hilarious. And a, and a, and a, and a, li- and a little hamster Anne? Anne, who's actually just Anne because she's so cute already. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody was happier with this challenge than Anne. <laughs> Can I just say nobody was happier with this challenge than Anne? Um, I mean, look for for Alan. A lot of this, a lot of the cakes and a lot of the baking in there is just kawaii because he's so. He's, I know everything. The, the freons were kind of like, oh, these are kawaii. No, they're freons. No, this is not the kawaii <laughs> challenge. Just later. Alan. Um, so now again, Christy obviously inspired by the technical went with nine eggs in her showstopper. Um, oh, you know she had a. A baker's 18. <laughs> she did. <laughs> only used half. Um, espresso buttercream, caramel syrup. Mm. It was a breakfast cake. It was inspired by breakfast. So you had the pancakes. It looked, looked amazing. Yeah. And she, um, like, the little eggs cuddling up yeah, to each other. the eggs were really cute oh, as well. I like to think that's just her and her, her partner, like, every morning, just getting into, like, egg cups and snuggling. They get into egg cups? Like, yes, yes. Like, crocheted egg cups, though. <laughs> like people crochet all kinds of crazy shit these days um, they really do yeah um so chi went with the cereal milk cake which again speaking of losing the plot like mm-hmm. Anne was so excited yeah um and chi was talking about how like hers is like to remember like watching cartoons when you're like a kid yeah. on a saturday morning it's like i still do that chi you know there will be saturday mornings particularly when the new Shearer episodes come out yeah and because that was my childhood, waking up and watching Shearer in the morning while eating my breakfast. And I might even have some Cocoa Pops while I'm watching Shearer. You do indeed. Saturday morning. Um, Not every Saturday morning. Just she went with sh- Strawberry Cereal Crunch. Mm. And it was very Halloween themed. And the pot, we'll get to the piping and the decoration. Look, at the, the end, only way hers could have gotten cuter is if you re- like pulled off like the little ghost masks and it was like, it's Mr. Turpington all, all along. along. <laughs> we're going we're we're away, um, away with it too. It was for those pesky kids, kids and their meddling dog. Um, and that crazy baker. <laughs> exactly. Um, 
Then at this point in time, we got the we got our little yeah. They were putting the bakes into the oven, and we got mm-hmm. some. I got a Shit's Creek reference. Yes, there was um. Oh, what'd she say? A warm regards. Like it's warm regards. regards. Warm regards into the. Um, and then Andre. Now mm. we're laughing. We're joking. We're being fun. We're being jovial. <laughs> um, but it's time for a serious moment. Um, Andre, buddy, pal, compadre, mm. chocolate, fine, great. Yuzu and matcha. <laughs> nice work, Andre. I'm here for it. Yuzu well done. and matcha. Ladies and gentlemen who've never heard this podcast before, a little recap on um, my darling husband's... Uh, love affair with yuzu and matcha would you like to explain my darling how much you love these two flavors and why they it's just just they are the most overdone they are the most overdone flavors on the planet andre put them in a cake they're the most overdone flavors on the planet oh my god because no one uses chocolate you gonna complain about chocolate no thank you not like you and your and your views on matcha are I don't really like it. Thank you. So, just because you don't like it doesn't mean that others. It don't. shouldn't be in every single bake known to man. <laughs> I think oh. if we put a poll out there, would people rather get rid of chocolate and all the bakes or matcha and all the bakes? I think chocolate would be fine, and I think matcha would lose by a landslide. Yeah, but look, you know, I like the position I take with matcha and yuzu, where I swing side to side over the fence. Depending on my whims of the and day. And we've said many and times. And my whim today is just to stir you up. And we've said many times. Mm. I actually like the flavour of yuzu. I just think it's been overdone. Um, and and thank you to a friend of the show, Aaron, uh, mm. from the last series of Great Australian Bake Off, who literally three seconds before we hit record on this, mm. sent me a photo of a thing of chocolates which were yuzu and matcha flavoured. I hope he bought them for you. And I, I hope, hope he, he sends them to you. I hope he didn't. Yeah, with um, a little... Little love everyone who listens to your podcast. No. Um, let's do something, however, that you're then going to praise to high heaven, which is Rosie. Yes. Because Rosie announces very loudly that red bean paste is food of the gods. It is. It's fucking delicious. Okay, so we have a really good um, Vietnamese bakery. It's Vietnamese? Yeah. It's bakery down um, in near where we live. In Miscellaneous City. In Miscellaneous City. And they do this um, sweet bun that's also got like a little slice of mochi in it and red bean. It is the most perfect thing you could ever have. Like it is just a milk bun, a little bit of mochi and red bean in the middle. And it really <coughs> is the best thing I've had since like the red bean emperor's balls, <laughs> the sesame red bean balls. Yeah. Yes. Uh, now Rosie was mm. making a mug of hot chocolate she um, was. and it was red bean paste, two kinds of tempered chocolate. Uh, and she was talking that the reason why she really did all this baking was after her, um, after her daughter passed away, that she her grandson needed someone to make the birthday cakes. Aww, and so yeah. Rosie's like, I'll do it. That's just oh, beautiful, but like yeah, heart wrenching too. It is. Um, and just on that note, it's today's the um when year anniversary of my mum dying. So yeah. you know, just you know, just having a little moment to remember her and her attempts at baking. <laughs> um, and the her attempts at food, the many the many corn like cookies that she um burnt over the years. Um, <laughs> The, um, the, no, but she did, she spent one night, so her thing was, um, cupcakes, but in, like, little ice cream cones, um, and she spent one night for my fifth birthday, like, making my whole, like, kindergarten class those, and, yeah, it was quite sweet, so. Yeah, it's nice to have a positive food story from your mum. Food story from my mum. Um, there's not many, but, you know, occasionally one will pop out. I'm sure she's haunting me now going, don't you remember the fucking ice cream it counters, it counters the bleeding duck story. Um, <laughs> so, Jomar. Now, Jomar was roasting rice for a tres leches soak yeah. because he was making hello, hello, rice milk. Yeah, um, and uh, we, Anne's face when that came up, she oh, was yeah. like, whoa. Jackfruit and pandan as well. Um, yeah. Now, I really feel like the Philip, like Filipino actors, actresses and comedians and stuff are about to fucking take off. Yeah. Like this, like, oh, what was I watching? Um... Oh, Spider Man No Way Home. You know, you've got the um the um the Filipino grandma in that. Yep. It was cool. So I'm like, oh maybe one day there'll be like, you know, like showdown boodle fight on T V. That could be fun. I just yeah. want to do boodle fight in general. Yeah. Why has that not become a show by the way? Showdown Why has boodle nobody fight? come up with a show called Showdown Boodle Fight? Oh my god, to see 
who can like we claim the rights right here the concept yeah. is ours we own it proper television if you're listening yeah we're here for we're it we're here we're here yep. um We'll, okay. get, we'll of course get Filipino people to like actually actually organise it, and organize yes, of it course. And do it. This is our concept, yes. You, you know, we'll just be the white people on the side taking credit for it. Yeah, um, we, 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 we like is... following tradition. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, John, um, you know, the Queen's dead. Someone else has got to step up and colonise the world. Exactly. Who else but us? Um, now, John was like, "I'm getting out aggression," as he was like beating up his, his cake. But he was saying that while he was laughing and smiling, so it was the least believable aggression. <laughs> Kawaii aggression. <laughs> yeah. Candy pecans and pumpkin spice cake with Yum. bourbon. So again, John and the booze. Mm-hmm. Coming through, John. Um, Zoya was making a, a mango curd and I swear I heard her say purple monkey dishwasher. <laughs> uh, it was a purple monkey cake. But all I could hear was purple monkey dishwasher and for the rest of the episode, every time she talked about her cake... All I could hear was purple monkey dishwasher. Is that a Simpsons? Re- yes. Oh, I look at me remembering stuff. It's the one where they're doing the... There's there's all the BART and the PTA and that, and they're, yeah. they're going back and forward about the strike. Mm-hmm. And the idea of, you know, they, you know they, they say blah, 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 purple, purple monkey dishwasher. We'll get them back, especially for that purple monkey dishwasher bit. <laughs> um, so vanilla sponge from her mother's recipe. And mm-hmm. again, that was where the teacup was shipped over. Yeah. It was like, yeah, look, my mother's oh, recipe. Oh, I'm so glad. I hope that didn't break. Oh, I just, I just pray. Because I broke my mum's um, trifle bowl and I still haven't recovered from that. You didn't break it. Here we are. Deep therapy sessions again. You yeah. didn't break it. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Nigel. Yeah. Now Alan comes over and goes, how's it all going? To which Nigel went, oh, it's all going well. Or it's all mirage. Yeah. Um, and I like Nigel's grasp of reality, which is tenuous, which is like, isn't it the same for all of us, really? Oh, definitely for me at the moment. Like, at the moment for you, oh. completely. Um, am I here? Am I podcasting? Or am I in bed having a fever dream again? Who knows? Um, mm-hmm. Kawhi Sushi um, is what he went with, with wasabi meringue. Um, now, I love this where they're going to go, so you're comfortable with fondant? And he goes, sure, I've done it twice. <laughs> Look, that's which is better than that some, I've done it. It's yeah. better than some bakers who, if they go, have you done this cake before? And they're like, no, uh, first time. Yeah. Have it a go. Um, at least he t- tried it. Then they cut to Lauren who randomly goes, I'm going to pipe some frogs. <laughs> which, which, look, without context, yep. sounds all kinds of wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm piping frogs. But in baking context, it suddenly makes more sense. Yes, look, if <coughs> frogs are... Uh, the the, um, the amphibian du jour at the moment. Um, but if you do like frogs as much as Lauren likes frogs, check out Lola Fucking Lust, a brilliant fucking burlesque performer from Australia who is also a frog researcher um, and would, and does a brilliant act dressed as a frog. She does. <laughs> um, so just thought I'd throw that in there, you know. Um, Getting her an international audience. Mm, you know, just now, perking people up. Now, we'll, we'll bypass the fact that she made a matcha raspberry cake mm. um, with the frogs on it. The knitted frog hat. She <gasps> looked like a member of an early 90s girl group. <laughs> the less successful um, um, aqu- aquatic girls. <laughs> 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 there, was fr- there was frog girl. The savoury girls. The savoury girls? Yeah. No, they've got to be aquatic girls because she's a frog. Then there would have been like an axolotl. <laughs> Oh, actual model girls, amazing. <laughs> um, salamander girl. <laughs> um, actually, I think they should just be straight amphibians. Toad girl left <laughs> quite early on. Toad girl didn't want any part of them. No. What other amphibians are there? I don't know. Um, the one that first walked out of primordial. Primordial girl. girl. <laughs> She's the one that first walked out. Oh, of primordial, primordial girl. girl. Canadians won't get that. They never got Peter Andre, thankfully. Oh, guys. my God. Did they not get Peter Andre? No, thankfully. He there's never a, made there's it a there. place he in this world, there. but they're part of the, the Commonwealth. Surely we no. have to inflict all the shit. No. The oh, my God. Yeah, look up Funky Junkie. Oh. That's what you want. Okay, look, at, okay. <laughs> look up Peter Andre Funky Junkie. Okay, fine. Do it. Do he's, it. He's actually quite a good... Um, He's, he's done the, the vanilla ice kind of like, no, you he's, know. He's not quite a good handyman. He's just a handyman. handyman. Yep, yep. I mean, Rob Van Winkle, you know, granted, I think has done it better than Peter Andre, yeah. but at least he's gone on to do something yes. other than Jordan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> deep cut, not, not time. Um, Lydia, <laughs> chocolate cake <coughs> and a mm-hmm. coffee caramel cake, mm-hmm. which was for her rescued bunny. So much like Carmel in Australian, oh, another God. bunny reference. I mean, granted, it was, it's the only time, unfortunately, we're going to get a reference. That's it for the bunnies. Don't be the bunny. Mm-hmm. Um, now, Rosie was using a very Larry 
method of this. Well, she had a spirit level in there to make sure her cake was dead even. <laughs> I hope Larry loaned it to her. I really do. Yeah, he just left his toolbox behind and went, Dear Rosie, I have left this. Secretly, it's under a floorboard. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Just under the third um, umbrella in the patio on the right. There's an extra bench. They haven't noticed it. I made it from scratch. (laughs) Um, You'll also find the still. (laughs) It's got all of my equipment and the still. Yep. Um, Now, Lauren's trying to carry her cake to the fridge and it starts sliding. Now, again, as we know from years of watching this show... Mm -hmm. That pavilion is very hot. Oof, isn't it just... And that's what got me, like, Nigel's wearing a beanie and he's from a cold place. Like, how did that not... Like, is it permanently affixed to his head? Yeah, it's, it's part of, it's part of like, his travelling... Like, he can't get back into Manitoba unless he has a beanie, no. like... No. Um, a beanie mark on his head? Now, Nigel's cake collapsed when he tried to move his it His partner off. won't recognise him. No. no <laughs> so you're like, like, who are you? Who are you? Where is Nigel? Put the beanie back on. My love! <laughs> <laughs> Now, Nigel's cake collapsed, but I really liked his line of, I wear sneakers, I can pivot. Um, <laughs> now, Nigel at this point went with the smaller cake and went, I hope a smaller cake's okay. And I'm like, well, it's, it's kawaii. Ooh. If ever there was a challenge where a smaller cake is okay, it's this is this the challenge. challenge. Yeah. Um, this isn't like the quad, make the biggest fucking cake you can. This is make a cute little small cake that's cute. Now, we've got a couple of... It up couple of rounds of piping there lauren and she in particular their piping was amazing oh my god lauren as she's decorating that cake yeah and also what i loved about lauren's is her choice of um cake stand as well just matched all of it beautifully yes like and, and the little frogs it was spectacular it's just everything so that the frog girl could have dreamed of when she grew up <laughs> and they cut back to lydian at the end and lydian's like I, i'm not sure that i've done quite enough she's like i'm a bit worried it's a bit too simple Mm. Um, so let's get into the judgment. Mm-hmm. Now, Lauren. Now, Kyla gushes immediately that the froggies are so in love. They are, and you have to call them froggies because they're just so cute. Um, the piping was very clean. It was very inviting, and the sponge screams matcha. Bruno, that's not the <laughs> compliment you think it is. Um, perfect mouthfeel of matcha. Again, I've heard those words, but together they make no sense. Um, <laughs> is the perfect mouthfeel of matcha a sponge? Because I always no, feel I think like it was it's the, a um, I, th- I think the perfect mouthfeel of Marcha was the first single from um, Aquatic Girls. <laughs> oh, no. The amphibious Amphib- Amphibious, yes. Um, John, mm-hmm. they said simple needs to be perfect and it needed neater edges because he went with a ghost shape over the top. Yeah. Um, but it was drama on the inside because he had a surprise in there, which was all of the chocolate beans. It was They were spectacular. Yeah. Um, I did that with my nephew. I don't yep. know if I, have I told this thing. So my nephew and I baked a cake for my niece because she got her black belt. Yeah, and we did the whole lollies inside. And I'm like, Shh, it's a surprise. Don't tell her. Anyway, <laughs> she's walked in and two seconds later, we baked you a cake. There's a surprise. There's lollies inside. <laughs> I was like, Shh, don't tell anyone. Kept the secret beautifully. Kept the secret beautifully. Um, so <laughs> they did say that the candy pecan. <laughs> They just said the candy pecans were lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, Zoya, they said it had a very strong presence. It showed good fondant use. The mango was bright. But Bruno, again, wanted more hits from it. Um, yeah. Nigel, Bruno loved... Uh, Bruno lost the concept a little bit because they said they wanted the nori brought up around the outside to make it more um, sushi-like. Mm-hmm. Um, the chocolate was good. For with- Carol. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Canadians, you are not going to get this. There is a great ad. I can't remember what it's for. But there's a line that comes out of it. We should get sushi sometime, Carol. You need to look it up. It's just stupidly funny. Anyway. Indeed. So chocolate was good with the ginger. Good meringue. Mm. The execution needed to be a bit better, though. Mm. Um, Joma. They absolutely loved the cute butt that he put on the back of his cake. Oh, my God. All cakes need little butts on it. Oh, if that's not your signature, like, I know you might be doing someone's wedding cake, but just put a little butt at the bottom. Sausage roll. Butt. Butt. <laughs> Cookies. Butt. Butt. Yeah, everything. <laughs> you know... Uh, what's it like the, the inauguration like I don't know Justin Trudeau's like 50th birthday or whatever butt on the cake butt on the cake yeah. um, so the green drew you right in it was very cute the pandan was quite good but they said the cake was a bit mealy which was the only concern mm. Rosie they said it was very whimsical rich in flavour but a bit gummy but the red bean was really nice yeah picking up on Jude's whimsy there picking up on the whimsy um now, Christie's, they said it looked exactly like breakfast, which it did. Mm. Great colour, looked like a cup of coffee, and it tastes like a cup of coffee, but very light cake. I do feel Christie's breakfast resembles my breakfast, where I don't even have it looking like breakfast. It's just cake. Yeah. Like, okay. I, I will do. I will do a donut for breakfast. Why? Because... Why not? Why not? 
I'm an adult and that's what I live to do. Uh, Lydia. I have no children to like fucking nice. like be a, what's it called? A role model to. I'm the aunt who will go. We're having chocolate cake for breakfast. You will. We won't jump off the roof though. This is not practical magic. No. We will, however, put the lime in the coconut and drink it all up. <laughs> okay. Back at the ranch. So Lydia, Ann, they said the mm. rabbit was a bit too simple. Uh, also, the two layers of the cake were not enough with the time. Mm. And the caramel was very watery. When they cut into it, the caramel was oh. literally running. And it's like not running in a caramely way. It was very liquidy. <laughs> More uh, of a watery way, less yeah. caramely. Uh, Andre, they said, it was very skilled with fondant. The colour contrast was good. The yuzu was sweet and not tart. The strawberry filling worked really well for Kyle. Mm-hmm. Um, and she... They said that it was very spooktacular. Um, <laughs> and they said they liked the fact that each face was detailed with different expressions. Yeah. Um, the cake was really had a really good bounce and a good crunch, and it wasn't too childish. They were worried it might be a bit childish, and it was mm. fine. Um, now, Lauren, Chi, and Christy were all in the running for Starbaker. Um, mm. Lydian, sort of Nigel, John sort of fell into that danger category. Yeah. Um, as, as Anne put it, because, you know, who doesn't like a pun? Expectations are no, high! No, 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 no. I expect one of those a week now, Anne. One of those a week. Yeah. Um, Star Baker was chi. That's perfectly fine, perfectly. Oh, it was, it was brilliant. Warranted. Like, her, her or Christy, like, yeah. but, like, chi was just... Yep. You know, she got first in the tech. It's just, yeah. Yeah, she was great. Beautiful. And home, unfortunately, and then we always hate the fact that we've got to send someone home in episode one. Um, mm-hmm. Lydian, unfortunately, the, the bunny cake was not enough. Oh, she had to hop on out of the pavilion. She did have to hop on out of the pavilion, which is a bit sad, obviously, mm-hmm. to lose anyone early on. Look, I really hope she is just, you know, off to go back to, I don't know, gaffering or something in the pavilion, that she is really just yeah, she's, one she's, of the... Um, she's, a, she's a runner. One of the she's, runners. She's a PR. Yeah, PA. Yeah. She does something on the set. She, she was just she's a she's a grounds person she's a she's a twitcher on the yeah. grounds she's going to answer your questions on the birds she is i really hope it's so. exactly what she's going to do yeah. so anyway that's episode one what um, if I, i'm i'm so happy it's you know it, it made it made getting covid not so bad yeah you know? so that's episode one in the books we'll be back on time this time with episode two. Yes. Um, um, hopefully another plague won't strike the house. No, hopefully. Also, again, as I've mentioned at the top of the episode, the audio quality will be better next week. We've had to record slightly differently just because of COVID. Mm. Um, it just means we've got to just change the way we've got to sit to record today. But the audio quality will be back to normal by next week. So apologies yes. if you haven't really liked it. But, you know, I hope the content carried it through. Yes. So until next episode, mm. I'm still Chris. And I'm still Christy. And we'll catch you all later. Cloak me in luster dust and throw me to the bakers. <laughs>